Trail, um, and I am in Newcastle tonight. I'm in the Clooney 2. I'm playing a show tonight with my backing band Eagle Level, and very much looking forward to it. Recording as the Pictures Trail for like the last 10 years now, 11 years. Oh shit. It's kind of uh, acoustic based singer songwriter y stuff, I guess, but when I record it and play it live, I try and mess up the songs a little bit so uh, although the songs have a heart with acoustic music very much influenced by dance music so there's a lot of electronic stuff going on there and sort of uh, weird slacker rock lo-fi uh, <laughs> stuff so there's a lot of weird untuned guitars in there so it's a mixture of rock and pop. I like playing with a band in, for a show like tonight in a sort of rockier venue a sort of small uh, but a dirty looking venue <laughs> because it's got a bit more of a, a bit more of an edge to it and it's exciting getting to play loud with a band. You don't have to pl worry about playing the entire time when you're in a band because uh, you can sort of stop playing your guitar at any one point but the rest of the band will kind of keep going quite like that. But I also like playing solo and like playing to really small rooms where you're you know, a bit that far away from someone. It depend depends on the venue but I like both. Well, I'm part of a collective. I run a record label called Fence Records up in Anstruther, uh, although I'm based on the island of Egg. The label's been going for years and years, and I'm the label manager uh, just now, and a lot of the music we put out is stuff that I'm a big fan of that has really influenced a lot of my writing. Uh, King Creasel, who founded the label, was a massive influence uh, on all my music. He's a great lyricist, an amazing musician, and he's also someone who his kind of ethos towards recording music and writing music is something I really like. He's got a real DIY kind of approach to writing stuff and recording stuff. He's recorded some like 40 something albums at home and that totally inspired me to buy my own 8 track machine and start recording and writing mm -hmm. songs in my caravan on heck. <laughs> All the Fence Collective stuff is a big influence. But then other bands like Pavement are a massive influence. Hot Chip are a huge influence to me. Chip. They're like one of my favourite bands. Uh, Underworld are a really big uh, influence to me. And uh, a lot more sort of contemporary electronic stuff. Uh, Nathan Fake um, and Luke Abbott, Fortet and Daphne. I've been living up on the island of Egg for the last couple of years. My girlfriend's a farmer on the island and we've got a caravan in a field. I'm invited my friend Steve uh, who records under the name Sweet Babu who's an amazing singer-songwriter in his own right and he's a great producer and I invited him up to come up to Egg for a few weeks and we found a cottage just on the shorefront and we set up all my equipment, drum machines, effects pedals, acoustic guitar, electric guitar and just a bunch of like weird toys that I had that made a noise, not just toys. <laughs> I had the songs already written, so it was just a case of putting down a guide for the songs on acoustic guitar with voice and then adding lots of weird stuff on top and then taking the guitar away and then taking the voice away a little bit and making the voice sound a little bit weird. So it was quite an interesting recording process. If you surrender what you do as an artist to a producer, you put your faith in that person completely, you know, to project what it is about you that people want to hear. And I think, you know, if I'd gone into a studio with um, someone who, you know, in a big fancy studio setup type thing with a band, they definitely would put the vocal and acoustic guitar to the front. And that's the good thing about recording stuff on your own uh, or with a pal. That you've got, you know, you've got control there and you can control how your stuff can, comes across. And I think it always makes for more interesting music, to be honest. Each of the songs has a lot of relevance to me and like it has a lot of meaning to me and there's a lot of like personal uh, stuff in the songs. I've not stuck them in too specific a space for people to kind of not have their own interpretations, you know. I grew up listening to R.E.M. and Michael Stipe would never have any, or very rarely would have many of his lyrics in the sleeve notes and stuff when you were getting the records. So you'd be listening to something, you couldn't, sometimes you couldn't work out what he was singing. Even before you realise you know the lyrics to a song, you can love a song, you know. And lyrics are the thing that n nail meaning to a song, or kind of, uh, or 
I think really define an artist. That's uh, more so than style or like a genre. It's the way you write your lyrics is how you really communicate with an audience. Lyrically, I kind of just go with something will come to me and, I'll, and then I'll have to shape the song around it. It's almost like I don't have a choice. It's like a, there'll be like a lyric or a line that'll come out. It's almost like the song is kind of leading me in a weird way. I didn't want to nail a specific story to any of the songs. They all carry that for mm -hmm. me, definitely. It's quite funny because there's one song it's about the death of my mother and about her passing away a couple of years ago. And then I read a review where someone was like, ah, oh, there's this beautiful song, it's like a breakup with his girlfriend. In, that, in those terms, there isn't a specific message that I'm... Mm -hmm. If people interpret my songs in the wrong way, then good. I'm lucky in the sense that I do music full-time. That's kind of, that's my full-time job. It doesn't matter if I'm writing Pictish Trail songs, or if I'm doing Pictish Trail gigs, or if I'm putting out a Pictish Trail record, or if I'm doing like all of that with a different band on the label. It excites me as much to see someone be really into the Eagle Owl record or um, Kid Canaveral's album. As soon as, you know, someone, if someone says to me, oh, I love that record you put out, that fills me with the same sort of thrill in a weird way to putting out my own stuff. I think music is kind of, is shaped by really good collaborations. I, I like, that doing the Silver Column stuff that I did a few years ago with Adam was like an amazing experience. Because it took me to places where I'd never been a lot of people will be like, don't do it, don't do it, forget <laughs> about it. And a lot of people now think that music is something that doesn't have a value. And it's something that, uh, oh, you can't make a living out of music anymore because no one's buying CDs. All these record shops are closing and you can't make a living out of music. But the weird thing is, is that music still is a massive part of people's lives. And when you look at something like Spotify and YouTube and stuff, you know, this is how people, a lot of people consume their music through that those ways. But those are companies that are making their money out of music. You know, music to them is still a commodity. But I think, like, this idea that music doesn't have a value anymore is completely wrong. For musicians who are starting out, I think the best thing you can do is to place a value on your music and not be afraid to charge for it and to put a price on it and, and to make people pay for what you're creating. Because it's art, you know. There's this weird train of thought that because it's art, you can't Oh, you don't. You're not meant to make any money out of it. It's, it's a hobby, or it's you know you're meant to do it just for the love and the passion of the art. It takes time, and it's expensive to do. If you, particularly if you're not using your own home recording equipment and stuff. There's so many bands that are prepared just to do gigs for, uh, and for no money and losing money and like traveling to get there just for the exposure and all that sort of stuff. That's fine to an extent, but no one's going to take your music seriously unless you unless you take it seriously, and unless you put a, a price tag on it and stand by it and say, yeah, this, this album is worth 10 quid. I think that's the most important thing. There's only really one superpower that means anything, and it's flying. It's more a bit shit. <laughs> and particularly the superheroes who don't fly and have a cape. You're like, what? Like What's the point? Batman, just, the cape must be really annoying. Get rid of it. At some point in your life, you should definitely go and see the Flaming Lips. But if there's one piece of advice that I could give to young people today, it's buy my album. This isn't the venue. This is a uh, big dressing room, leather couch, no spare spirit. Bit back for a bit of vomit <laughs> later on. My. God.